I'm Jesse North for Discover Jersey Arts, and I'm here at the George Street Playhouse where the new Ken Ludwig farcical play Fox on the Fairway is running. It stars Peter Scolari of Bosom Buddies fame and Newhart, and it runs through April 17th. You see that, uh, that blue chair? <coughs> that one hit the right leg. You mean putt it? No, I mean walk over, break it in half with your head. Of course I mean putt it! <laughs> In the show. I play, I play a, a pompous a director of a country club. I compete yearly in an inter-club golf tournament. It's a golf farce, a fox on the fairway. Ken Ludwig, the playwright, he writes in this style that I, I know he'll agree is, is reminiscent of, uh, of the 30s. The language, um, it's a little precious, and um, it's very easy for us to get into these these demeanors, you know, these behaviors. My character has lost five consecutive interclub tournaments and, and by hook or by crook in this, in, in our play, he hopes to win this one and has gone to some uh, derelict means to try and achieve that. Tough question, tough question. Bob Newhart probably in television because well, he also let me in as a human being, mm -hmm. and I was about 28 or 29 years old when I first guest starred on the New Heart Show, and I, and I was thunderstruck that he would give me personal attention mm -hmm. and approval. And once I was let into that, uh, that area of trust, uh, then I also shared his very warped, disturbing sense of humor. So. There was a double-edged thing going on when we would act in the program in front of a live audience. <clears throat> there was the new art persona that we all know about. It was dry, wholesome, uh, anxious. And then there's the actual Bob Newhart, mm -hmm. who, who is dry, but not wholesome and not, not anxious. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So that, that double whammy. Uh, of course, Hanks and I, when we did Bosom Buddies, we found each other possibly funny. We, we were wrong, but that's often the case when you work intimately, when you really become a comedy team. I didn't get to film Larry Crown. I was doing a play off-Broadway, and Tom went to such length to promote me in the, in the movie. I had a wonderful role the, with Julia Roberts. The, the film rescheduled my scenes. And I was opening in a play about a year ago. Excuse me. Was it White's time. Lies? It was White's Lies. And, and so suddenly the, the schedules conflicted and I would have uh, been within my rights to leave White's Lies for a performance week to do this film, but it just so happened that that performance week was, um, was the critics opening. Okay. Gotcha. And I searched my conscience. So you are not in the film? I'm not in the okay. film. Okay. Well, disappointed, but at least we can yeah, set that I'm, straight. I'm sure I would have been wonderful. Yeah, and I'm a year older than Tom. He was born July 9th in 56. And I have a 22-year-old son, 20-year-old son, so I'm in the range. Um, but it doesn't seem like any of them are on any kind of schedule, mm -hmm. any immediate pressing need to have children. So right. It's gonna, I'm gonna have to wait a little longer. It is a, uh, a sort of message in your, in your mailbox that, of course, I mean, I'm 55, of course I could, have, I could have a grandchild who was, you know, 12, 15 years old. Um, had I started younger, but my first son was born, I was 33. Mm -hmm. So I started kind of late. Tom started earlier. When we were doing Bosom Buddies, Colin was a wee thing. So that was what, 79 to 82 range. And Colin then was already, you know, toss around, have conversation with kind of age, mm -hmm. five, six. I guess mm -hmm. so Colin must be, what, 32 years yeah. old? Something, you know, yeah. absolutely crazy. No, I haven't had plans. time. It's 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 conflicted, and my old uh, uh, 
cohort, uh, John LaRoquette, is playing in it too. And I don't know if John's done musicals before, but we, we used to um, see each other all the time. Mm -hmm. we, you know, he, he won many Emmys, and I and I uh, was nominated in the same years as John. He was gracious enough to say when I lost a, a third Emmy to him that it should have, you know, in the press, he said, well, it should have been Peter. He had a better year than I did. I thought that was uh, wonderful. And I've worked with his dad on West Wing. Uh, my heart goes out to uh, Charlie. Whatever's going on, I have no, uh, it's not for me to stand in judgment. <clears throat> Show business, we've been talking about this on the set, and I guess actors and, and folks uh, you know, in the arts everywhere are talking about it, and, and folks you know, who are going through the internet postings about it. This is, uh, because he's an actor and he's in the spotlight, all of it takes on a, a proportion, a size. And I think true, too, for anyone who, who is the sort of player in all of it. And that's got to be impossible mm -hmm. to manage when your divorce is in the headlines or, you know, allegations of one kind or another. Or, you know, let's be diplomatic, some of your perhaps less than best days mm -hmm. speaking for yourself or speaking about your difficulties. Um, so, I mean, I, I've never, uh, there's never been any controversy uh, about me, and to, to a large extent, I keep to myself. I make a, I like to think I make an honest account of myself, but there's not much, it's true too of Tom. <clears throat> Interviewers over the years have asked me about Tom Hanks, well, you have any dirt on him? And I said, yeah, I got about 15 minutes, and there, it, there ain't much to it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, so there's not any attention. They're not looking for Tom. And, you know, they're looking for, for a Charlie Sheen mm -hmm. or for a Russell Crowe or someone who we believe may have a sort of bad boy energy because it's news. I don't think I'm a dull person or without edge, nor am I um, simple and plain. I'm an odd man, and as a father, I've... In the, particularly in the last five or six years, I've had to come to grips with that. I have an 11 and a 10-year-old daughter, 11-year-old son, and they should have the father that, you know, who is the person that I am. I've realized I can't really kind of create a persona of a dad. You know, hey, I talked to you about this earlier. No, I'm, your dad's an actor, and, and they dig it, you know, mm -hmm. my, along with all the other great adults who help raise all my children, I've been married and divorced. Um, we were looking at each other uh, as we are, and that's, uh, but between me and Charlie, there's no, there's no connection. But I tell you what, actors being as we are, if we worked on a set together, there'd be a shorthand. Mm -hmm. The guy's a fantastic uh, craftsman. He's really funny. He's, he's a good dramatic actor, you know, lest we forget. I have a, a couple of tattoos. Ah, you espied this. <clears throat> well, this is um, a butterfly. It's a, the more astute of your, the, uh, clearly the entomologist picked that up right away. This has uh, got an initial C in the right wing, camera left in your case, which is my daughter's name, Callie Elizabeth. And in the left wing, a, a more difficult uh, script, uh, the letter K which is my 11-year-old son's name, Keaton. And the body of the butterfly is the, is the surname, is an S for Scolari. Now, my two older sons, who are, um, did you get a good shot of that? I did. <laughs> my it's two older beautiful. sons uh, are Nick and Joe, and they're like, hey, where's our tattoo? Uh, I'm gonna have to work that out. I have another one on my body, but it's not for family really, so much. What the hell is going on here? I can explain. Well, you better stop. Thank <laughs> you.